Welcome back to the Midyear Mitch YouTube channel. In today's episode, we're starting to take apart this 1968 Corvette big block. We're gonna take off the front and rear bumpers, then we're gonna dive into cutting off the exhaust and hopefully getting the original gas tank out of this thing to see if it has a tank sticker to prove is this car really a 427, 435 horse car from the factory? So be sure to stick around. I uncovered the 68 Corvette because it's time to start taking this thing apart to get it ready to pull the body. I'm waiting for some parts for this car. So let's go ahead and jump on this. I think I'm gonna start with the back end just because. So I'm gonna start off by taking the license plate off, getting the bumpers off, exhaust tips, the valance, and also these mufflers. This one's not as bad, it's this one. This muffler is starting to dig into the quarter panel down here. So I think this was a different exhaust that was put on here, not necessarily the correct one. And the muffler hangers are gone and they're digging into the quarters. So we gotta get these mufflers out of the way as well. So got the license plate off, the exhaust tips, exhaust bezels, rear valance, and the bumpers, and everything looks pretty good. But this is kind of interesting. I wanted to show you guys this. This is one of the bumper rods, and it's just welded to the frame. This must be the hole right behind it, right there, where it probably should be bolted to. And then this one is doing the same. This bracket's welded to the frame and just kind of floating here. This one is welded, but bolted. But I think we'll, I don't know what we're gonna do. I don't know if I have to cut all those welds off to get those brackets off and just make the brackets actually work properly. But that'll be, I gotta get those off before we get the body off. Gotta get the mufflers off. But I wanted to show you guys this spare tire. So check this out. It really smells like varnished gas under here. So the sending unit has been leaking and it leaked directly onto the spare tire and just dissolved the tire. So we can see that this is the same type of wheel that's on the car. And you can see the whole way down to the inside of the tire. So I'm guessing that the inside of this tire is just full of varnishy gas. I mean, look at, I didn't know that, that that's a custom feature. I didn't know that gas would eat through a tire like that. So that's kind of interesting. I'm sure at some point this popped or just had no, no air in it whenever it ate through it. But either way, this has got to go. This is probably a source of some of the stink. So since the bumper brackets are welded to the frame, I decided to pull out the spare tire tub and I decided to start pulling the exhaust and this muffler, holy cow. Uh, this muffler was packed full of rust and some nuts, you know. But the most exciting news is we got a tank sticker. I saw that this tank had the original logo on the bottom, so I thought this was the original tank. And if we go here, we've got the tank sticker. So. She's in, she's not in great shape. So I got the gas tank sitting up here on the bench so we can get a better look at the tank sticker. So this sticker was put on the gas tank when it went down the assembly line so they would know what options would go on the car. And now we can go the opposite way with it. We can use this to tell us what options should be on the car and help validate it. The car was built 10, 13, 67. We've got the dealer number here, which looks like a 115. Corvette order copy. Mm -hmm. Then down a line, we've got convert. Looks like a 298 something something A. And that comes out to be silver. Yep, the car's silver. Now we go to the fun stuff. Trim. We go over here. Looks like it says black trim, which we know the interior is black. Okay, this is the moment we're waiting for. Engine. Got that right there. We'll come over here to the sales code. Maybe a little hard to make out, but we've got an L, 7, and a 1. It's kind of hard to see, but L7 to 1, 
we come over here. Of course, it's right where there's this tear and a lot of discoloration. That's where I would want to see. But we've got a 4, 3, 5. You see that 5 horsepower. Then we've got right here, it's hard to make out, Turbo Jet V8. So we do have a true 427, 435 horse car. That checks out. Unfortunately, this thing is in really bad shape. I mean, it is a you know, 50, 60 some year old piece of paper. So, you know, it's pretty impressive, but it's loose over here, but it's very attached and rusted right here. And unfortunately, this is in a very good spot. You know, this is where all the meat and potatoes of this build sheet are. So what I think I'm gonna have to do is just cut this tank and this is forever attached to this tank. Um, but we can at least separate it because I'm not keeping this gas tank. This gas tank cannot go back in the cart shot. So I'm going to try to carefully extract this, drill some holes in the corner, and carefully use my body saw to extract this. So now that I removed the tank sticker from the car, I'm just going to go ahead and put the evidence in the car. The evidence. Put the evidence in the car. But, but Debbie, you, but, uh, put the evidence in the car. All right, now let's move on to the front. We have the back pretty well tackled. Just have to get some bumper brackets off the frame, which are welded, so that's fine. I want to try to figure out how to get this bumper off and all these goofy brackets that are on the front to extend the frame. So I think, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I'm probably going to take the license plate off, take these grills out. And then I thought this was part of the grill, but I guess these are bumperettes. And I see brackets back here for this big old bumper. So I'm gonna do some investigating. This is where the C3s are unique. So I got the front license plate off, the three grill inserts, the bumperettes, and the front bumper, and all that stuff came off pretty easily. And I have an assembly manual, which I'm glad I bought it for this car, because just look at all this mumbo jumbo that's going on here. Here's your bumper, your bumperettes. You have two brackets stacked up. You have this bracket stacks on top of this bracket, which goes onto the frame. There's a bracket here. And up here so there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in a small area so now to pull the body i'm pretty sure all of these brackets have to come off of the frame so next we got to pull these guys off both sides we got to remove the center u-shaped one we got to pull this lower bracket and then eventually the two side ones and then i believe the core support like a mid-year bolts to the front of the frame but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm gonna take things apart slowly because I don't wanna uh, you know, disconnect the front end from the frame. We need that to be supported at this moment. It was a little bit of a battle, but we got it knocked out. I have the front bumpers and all the bumper brackets out of here. I had to move, remove the water pump. I had to loosen the alternator to finally be able to wiggle out the fan shroud and the radiator. That was a little bit of a chore, um, but I got those guys out, disconnected the brake lines, and I see what Derek from Vice Grip Garage means about making sure you lube up this junction, heat and lube, so that way it doesn't just twist off the brake line. This one came free, that one didn't. Um, but we're gonna put new brake lines in here anyway, so that really doesn't matter. So we have a pretty good sized parts pile here, over here and on the shelf. So I think this car's in a pretty good spot. We still have to remove the bumper brackets, but like I said, these are actually welded to the car. So I really don't feel like doing that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and cut 
th these brackets free from the chassis and there's a ground strap I need to remove, disconnect the battery cables. So I'm gonna do some of that stuff uh, for the next video on this car. We also have to pull out the e-brake cable, disconnect the shifter, pull the steering column, the disconnect the tack and speedo cables, to get the steering column out of here, check to make sure all the wiring's disconnected where it needs to be, like on the starter, alternator, and just, you know, make sure we're good. We're not gonna have anything that we're hanging up on. And then finally, we'll pull off the um, body mount bolts and we'll get this thing ready to pull off. Um, so that'll be the next time you see this. I also wanna get the intake off of this. And we have our local mechanic who will uh, rebuild the carbs. And then we'll start sending parts out for this car to have them rebuild. I talked to Bears Corvette. They're gonna check out the rear end, trailing arms, half shafts, steering box, all that stuff. So they'll go through that stuff, rebuild it while the chassis is getting powder coated, the engine's getting checked, transmission's getting checked. Um, so then all the stuff will come back at once and we should be able to get this thing put back to pretty much this state relatively quickly. That's, that's the goal. So we're gonna work on that in the background. Um, but I think the card's in a pretty good spot. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. The next video will either be on this car or on Centerfield. I'm not quite sure yet. But either way, we're gonna have some good videos coming out for you guys. And I have a lot of work to do. So I'll catch you guys later. So let me go to our camera. I just took a, oops, flip it up, flip it. Why did it, okay, we'll take another picture. It's upside down. Something's happening. What's happening with my phone? Technical difficulties.